In today's show, we're going to be talking about points leagues. Yes, points leagues. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are locked on fantasy basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Reminder, Basketball Monster is open. New season, new projections. Go ahead and get your membership over there. And for those of you that don't know what Basketball Monster is, it's the site that I work at. Of course, uh, I mentioned that at the start of every show. Um, we, I do projections for the whole season, and then they're adjusted multiple times every day throughout the entirety of the season. You have a draft tracker tool to help you in your drafts, Trade Monster to help analyze trades. Uh, we write notes on every single game, um, yeah, recapping what happened, whether it's real pickups, trades, all that sort of stuff over at Basketball Monster. And yes, you can have multiple leagues on there. Yes, you can customize it to whatever your format is, auction, snake. 20 teams, 30 categories, uh, points leagues, whatever whatever it is, we tailor the projections to your settings. So it's not just a, a random ranking list. It is projections based on statistical output, and then that gets translated from there. Today, we're doing points leagues because so many people, Josh, do points league content. Josh, do points league content. Let, let's get a couple of things out of the way with, with this. Now, if you're in a categories league, this has nothing to do with you. Like, thank you for watching. Thank you for downloading. Let it play in the background. Absolutely nothing to do with you. Next thing. I don't like points leagues. People know this. They are very, very basic. But in saying that, they are a fantastic way to get more people involved in fantasy basketball. And as someone pointed out to me, which really made me think, is that a lot of the people who listen to this show are people who might be beginners and they might be playing points leagues. So maybe putting out some content for them is useful. And that is absolutely true, right? There is a a lot of the new people will seek out advice and that's what this is for. Just a couple of misconceptions. The vast majority of people do not play points leagues. That someone said that to me yesterday. So I thought I had to address that. that is not true. It is not even close to being true. With points leagues in terms of drafting strategy, here's your drafting strategy. Who is projected to score the most points? Draft that player. There's nothing There's nothing in, into it at all. There's no extra strategy in a points league versus a categories league. There is nothing like that. Who do you think will score the most points? Whatever your scoring system is, that is how you do a, a draft. Don't worry about it. It's not like fantasy football where you've got to make sure you get running backs early. That doesn't work that way in basketball. Who is going to score the most points? Make sure you do fill up all of your active spots over the first 10, 11 rounds. Make sure you do that, but it's not like get these position early, get this later. Just get who scores the most points at your po- your portion of the draft. Right, so that's why when people ask, you know, can you have points league content? I don't really know what people want because when you, well, yeah, at the start of the season, I've got all the projections on Basketball Monster. Here's how I think these players will do. During the season, you know, oh, who do I look at as trades? Look what your guy's averaging. Look what the other guy's averaging. Try and get more points out of it. Try and put context to it as well. Why is this guy down? Why is this guy up? But try and do it that way. That's, yeah, there is, and it is harder, much harder to pull off trades in points leagues because your guy's averaging 35, my guy's averaging 30. Why the hell if I've got the 35 point guy, am I doing that trade? There's absolutely no reason to do it. So again, I am, what I'm doing into this, this show is just a brief explanation of points leagues. Um, and the scoring formats. And again, you're, and another reason why it's hard to do score uh, points league content is because everyone's points format is different. You might use standard Yahoo. You might use old standard ESPN. You might use new standard ESPN. You might use a custom format and it changes things around. That's why you go into Basketball Monster, you put your settings in and you can see how these projections change for these players. I can't go through you know, 50 different scoring settings to tell you if someone ranks one spot higher than the other guy, it's literally impossible to do that. So that that, that is what makes it hard. Sites have tried to create standard scoring. And of course, ESPN goes and dicks that around by throwing their own random scoring system in there as well. But what we're going to cover today is Yahoo standard scoring, which is also NBA.com standard scoring, which conversely or conversely or coincidentally, not coincidentally, it's FanDuel standard scoring as well for DFS. 
And we're going to talk about ESPN's new scoring system. So what is Yahoo's default scoring system? Yahoo's default scoring system is one point per point, 1.2 points per rebound, 1.5 points per assist, three points per steal, three points per block, and minus one point for turnover. As is the case in nearly every points league, points, the points category, scoring the basketball is significantly overvalued. It is way overvalued. And that is why, in general, when you're looking at players in points leagues, you just want players who score points. And you can say, oh yeah, but they made steals and blocks worth three. That's not, that doesn't, it's not how it works. A league average scorer in, yeah, out of the top 150 players, which is your standard fantasy pool, 16 points per game. A league average player for steals, one steal per game. Therefore, for the 16 point per game guy, you're getting 16 fantasy points. For the one steal guy, you're getting three fantasy points. For the one block guy, you're getting, what, 2.8 fantasy points. It's not even close. Rebounds at 1.2, the average for that is like seven, I think, or six. So what we're talking about, yeah, you get seven fantasy points. Fantasy point scoring is massively skewed towards who puts the ball in the basket. If they wanted to make it fair, maybe you make steals worth 15 points and blocks worth 17 points and rebounds worth uh, you know, eight points and assists worth what, whatever it is, um, you know, seven points or something like that to really even those categories up. But with the way things go at this point, it's just, it's, it's points. For example, we look at um, you know, someone like uh, Yanni Antetokounmpo, if we've got him projected, you know, say 55 to 60 fantasy points per game, over half of those is coming from just scoring. And then everything else is, is tacked is tacked on there. So that is what makes it, you know, really, it is it is just about point scoring. That is where your bulk of your value is coming from um, in terms of fantasy points leagues. And so that's another reason why I'm not as high on them because, again, everything's boiled down to one number. There's no nuance. There's no strategy with it. And it is heavily, heavily weighted towards that one uh, that one category. You guys have also been asking for this. Mock drafts, it's coming. There's one coming tomorrow. Um, I put out the call for it over on the Discord channel, which you can find the description of below. And uh, you, you can see that I've tweeted it out plenty of times. Um, yeah, that one is coming tomorrow. And there'll be more mock drafts coming next week. So I'll throw them out on the Discord channel. I'll throw some of them out on the Basketball Monster Forum. I'll throw some of them out on my Twitter. But we are really cracking into mock drafts now. We're going to do snake mock drafts for head-to-head. -head. We'll do a points league mock draft. We'll do a roto mock draft. We'll do an auction slash salary cap mock draft. We'll do deeper league mock drafts. There'll be a lot of drafts happening, don't worry. And the first one of those is coming uh, on tomorrow's yeah, tomorrow's show. There will also be some shows across the weekend as well. Uh, get those ones out for you. All right, so let's look at these. Should we? Uh, should I, yeah, let's let's look at the Yahoo stuff first, and then we'll come back and talk about ESPN and their scoring set settings. I think that's a good way to do it. All right, so on Yahoo, what we're going to do here today is look at sleepers. So the ADP numbers over on Yahoo are based on because the vast vast majority. I'm saying seventy percent of leagues. 75% of leagues are category leagues on Yahoo. The rankings are based on, the X ranks are based on category leagues. All the information is provided for category leagues. So the ADPs, therefore, are, are based on category leagues. So when you go into your points league draft or your points league mock draft, those ADPs are category league ADPs. So that does mean that there is value for you out there. Don't follow those ADPs. They are for category leagues and not for points leagues. So what I'm going to do here is go through who the sleepers are and go through who the busts are based on those category ADPs because you're, of course, drafting in points leagues. Darren Fox is listed at number 46. He was the 35th best player in Yahoo Fantasy Points last year. I think he takes an even bigger step forward this season and smashes that number. He should be close to a second round guy to me in points league. So there is a fair degree of value there in Darren Fox. The next one is outrageous to me, DeMontis Sabonis. He was the 18th ranked player in uh, Yahoo Fantasy Points last year. His ADP is 59. Do not let him fall outside of the second round. This is, an, uh, I get this. I'm sure this is the content that you guys are coming for in points leagues. Demontis Sabonis at an ADP of 59 is nonsense. He is a second round player. Depending on how switched on the other people are in your league, and because a lot of points leagues are beginners, you don't need to take him in round two. Grab him in round four. Maybe grab him in round three, grab him in round four, and this is how you are going to win your league. 
really comfortably. He was a top 20 player last year. He's ADP of 59. Demontis Sabonis is an absolute no-brainer there. I don't really see... Look, maybe his usage dips a little bit because he has to play a full season with Victor Oladipo. But when you got a 40-spot buffer in terms of last season's rank versus this season's ADP, I feel pretty good about it. Gordon Haywood comes in at number 70. I think Haywood's going to be a top 50-ish sort of guy last year. He was already 60th last year, and now he goes to the Hornets where his usage should be a lot higher. I think there is some real... Look, I think he's probably got yeah, equal uh, upside in category leagues in terms of ADP, but for points leagues, there's still a lot of value there for Gordo. He's probably looking to be a 35 Yahoo fantasy point per game guy and a pick 70. You'll take that every day of the week. Julius Randle is a guy that always comes in underrated in points leagues because he all he does is score and rebound. He does nothing else, but that is ax, abs, absolutely, ax, exactly, you know what I'm trying to say. That is what you want in a points league, and that's what Julius Randle does. He was the 46th ranked player last year. His ADP at 95, that makes no sense. Tom Thibodeau came out with a quote yesterday, which is very Tom Thibodeau. We're not just giving minutes to rookies to develop them. We want them to compete and to win. Obi Toppin, you are playing off the bench. And it's as simple as that. There are so many people who just think that Obi Toppin is coming in. He's starting and he's playing big minutes. And he's going to win the rookie of the year. That, they, they either don't know who Tom Thibodeau is or they don't understand that Obi Toppin's not good. Look, he's not the number one pick, Toppin. Oh, the front office invested this pick in him. Yeah, that, that's all well and good. They did. But they also invested a you know, pick in Kevin Knox and Frank Nilakina. And yeah, Frank Kaminsky was a number nine pick overall. There are plenty of players. Like once you're out of the top two or three in a regular draft, like these guys don't aren't demanded or don't demand roles and don't get given them to them. Jarrett Culver was the pick six, sixth pick last year. He barely played. Like this doesn't mean that you come in and get big minutes straight away, especially in a draft as shit as this, where Toppin wouldn't be a lottery pick in next year's draft. Probably wouldn't even be, or maybe even a top 20 pick in next year's draft, if we're being honest. Anyway, all that's to say that Julius Randle at 95 is one of the biggest steals of your uh, fantasy points league draft. LaMelo Ball at 96. You see a lot of people having blank uh, blanket statements. Don't draft rookies. Reach for rookies. There's no such thing as a blanket statement like that. Don't draft rookies is, a bad, is bad advice. Don't go crazy on rookies is good advice. And that's where you've got to get the nuance in between that. LaMelo's ADP at 96 for a points league where you don't have to worry about his efficiency, is fantastic to me. So if he's there at 75, at 80, I'll, I'll take him every day of the week. That's a different situation to top. And he's the best player in the draft. He was picked at number three, and he's got a clear path to get minutes and beat that number. So at 96, no worries with LaMelo Ball. See, again, I, avoiding rookies. Rookies can suck. There's no doubt about that. Taking a rookie with your last two picks, getting some upside, no worries. Avoiding rookies at all cost is a problem. And you've got to look at some of them. Like you see Obi Toppin or Anthony Edwards ADP, they're too high. You have nothing to do with them there. Lamallo at 96, yeah, no worries. I'm all about that, especially in this points league format. Kobe White at 124. I don't even know what we're doing here. Like why, why is he so low? He was 158th last year and played 26 minutes. Expect an extra you know, seven to eight minutes on top of that, plus more usage. Um, he's more likely to be a top 60 guy than to be outside the top 125 this season. So absolute massive value for Kobe uh, when we're looking at the back end of your draft there at 124. I just, I can't understand that. Al Horford at 94. He is the only center on that roster in Oklahoma City. He should get somewhat of a bounce back. He's playing in his natural position. Take him at 94. Maybe get 30 spots of value out of him. He's not the greatest fantasy points player. But um, he was 77th last year. So that ADP of 94 is expecting him to get worse than where he was last year, where he was coming off the bench for the back end of the season. Yeah, so Porter at 94, all about it. Uh, not Porter. That's uh, that's foreshadowing the next guy. Horford at 94, because the next guy is Mickey Porter. Uh, 108 on Yahoo. Love him in category leagues. Love him in points leagues. Michael Malone came out and all but, all but said he's going to be the starter. Now, he didn't. This is what he, he said something along the lines of this. I'm paraphrasing. We're not just going to come out and hand Michael Porter the starting job. He's going to have to work for it. All that means is that he's handing him the starting job and we're giving it the impression that he's going to have to work for it. He's going to start. I've been telling you this for, for weeks. I've heard it from multiple Denver people. He will start and he will get pretty good minutes and there will be some defensive issues, but he is going to start and he is going to beat that 108 ADP pretty comfortably. Cannot for the absolute life of me work out Colin Sexton at 128. 
He was ranked 79th last year. His game is perfectly suited to points leagues because he scores and doesn't do very much else. So what are we doing at 128? Like you can you can absolutely clean up at the end here. Sexton at 128, Kobe White 124, Porter at 108. Like you are smashing these late round picks. Um, really, really good value in getting these guys. Number 100 is Marvin Bagley. Now I'm probably less confident with this, but if Bagley plays 26, 27 minutes, he, he'll beat this number. Now last year, Bagley wasn't that good. He was still a top 100 player. He was the 98th ranked player in Yahoo Fantasy Points Leagues. I think he'll be better than that. I hope. Can he stay healthy? I've got no idea. Um, but I, I still think there's some pretty good value in Bagley in a points league because like Julius Randle, he gets points and rebounds. He does nothing else, but he gets points and rebounds and that is what works in a points league. Mark Fultz at 132. You've heard me talk about him already. You could snatch 60 points of 60 rounds of value, not rounds, positions of value here with Fultz. He's playing more minutes. He's you know establishing his second year as a full-time starter, and he was 112th ranked player last year. Absolute no-brainer. Jeremy Grant at 131. Come on, what, what the hell are we doing here? He's going to start. He's going to play more minutes. He's going to smash that top 100. That's an easy one. Where Blunty, James Wiseman, Where are you now? 110th ranked player. We had some comments from Steve Kerr again, just very similar to the Michael Malone ones talking about Michael Porter. Just. Just really putting it out there that Wiseman's going to start and they're going to have to play through some issues with him, but he's going to get there and they're going to develop him and that's exactly what they're going to do. He's going to start. I thought there'd be some concerns with that and maybe they just wouldn't do it, but the clay injury has changed my mind on that. And of course, yeah, hearing from people that that's not what they're going to do has changed my mind on it as well. Uh, so Wiseman add, and it's again, don't net, don't just avoid rookies at all times and rookies will often start the season slow, but Wiseman, again, the game is suited to points leagues. Points and rebounds, sure, that's what he does. And at 110, you're really not risking anything. And then a couple of Knicks. RJ Barrett, whose game really is suited to points leagues versus category leagues because his bad percentages don't matter. He was 113th last year. In his um, his ADP is 130. You've already won. You've already won there. Plus, he's in his second year. Improvement could come. Love it. And his teammate in the backcourt, Alfred Payton. Now, I don't know if Payton's going to start. Will they start Nilakina? Will they start Dennis Smith? Who knows what Thibodeau is going to do? But at 151, which is the last pick in your draft, I'll be uh, I'll be all over Alfred Payton and just seeing what uh, seeing what can come from that. If you want to get basketball smart, though, it starts with listening to Hollinger and Duncan, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, NBA analytics pioneer and front office insider John Hollinger joins Dunked On Podcast host Nate Duncan to bring you scouting reports, game breakdowns, and salary cap analysis. Subscribe to Hollinger and Duncan today wherever you get podcasts. All right, on to the list of sleepers. Oh, sorry, the busts for Yahoo. Steph Curry. Love Steph. He's going to have a massive year. In a points league, he's shit. He's nowhere near this good. And by shit, that's a very relative term. He hasn't been a top 10 player in points leagues for about four years. And I think he can maybe get back to being a first round guy this year. But at pick four, you are wasting it. And just you know, so I give some spoilers away maybe for my rankings. In points leagues, Yahoo points leagues, your top two, Ayani and Luka Doncic, simple, straightforward. In category leagues, that is not the case. In points leagues, they are your top. Then Davis and Harden. Curry is not in that top four. He's not in the top six. He's not in the top nine. He is out of that range. So if you're picking him at top four in a category league, I think you're doing it wrong. John Collins is a bust in any format at number 14. I worry about Gallinari. I worry about Capella. I worry about Okongwu. I worry about Hunter. I worry about usage to Bogdanovich. There's so many things that can go wrong for Collins, and we don't want him at pick 14. It is just a huge, huge waste. Last year... In a points league, he still wasn't as good as he was in a category league. He was ranked 21st. So you're already at a deficit if he's in an absolute best case scenario. So at 14, you've got no no hope of doing that. Drew Holiday at 28, I don't like it. He was 33rd last year. Minutes will go down this year. Usage will probably drop as well. Absolutely no reason to do that for him there. And then you got Mitchie Robinson. If I can find the button. And Mitch Robinson says, I'll take it from here. Unfortunately, Mitch won't take it from here because his points league value is terrible compared to categories. 101st last year. There is the risk with how Thibodeau, uh, Thibodeau runs the minutes. Thibodeau runs the minutes. I forget how to say his name. Thibodeau runs the minutes. Uh, I don't believe Nerlens Noel will start over Robinson. And I think that there is a chance that Robinson plays 30 minutes a night if he can stay out of foul trouble. But his game is not suited to points leagues at all. Lonzo Ball at 53. Uh, Lamello Ball, I think, is a little bit more suited towards points leagues and Lonzo because of the usage and the scoring mentality. 
Lonzo was 64th last year. So 53 is expecting an improvement. And maybe that comes. I just don't really like it for Lonzo at that area. And then you go on to some more busts. Bud Heald coming in at 49. Heald may not start. I don't really think he's the greatest option at fifty at 49. There are many, many better ones there. Kemba Walker is absolutely straightforward. Number 26 for Kemba. This is a bloke who's not even going to start the season, who's got a, a knee that I'm actually worried that he's finished, to be honest. Uh, maybe it's not quite Brandon Roy, but I'm real worried about where Kemba goes from here. He's going to sit back-to-backs. He's going to have minutes restrictions. He's going to miss the start of the season. And at pick 26, you are burned. You might as well just quit your league. If you're picking him at 26, just quit your league because you're not winning. Robert Covington at 44. Love Bob Cove. Uh, at 44, it's not happening. He was the 80th best player in points leagues last year. He might play fewer minutes in Portland than he did in Houston. And that is a category league ADP if I've ever seen it. Don't do it. Now, let me I have to tell you something that frustrates me. This is just going to be me be going on a rant. There are players that I like a lot, right? I've always liked Bob Covington. Those of you who listened a long time, love it. He's always been undervalued. I liked Bam Adebayo. I smashed him last year as like a second or third round guy. Love it. Um, yeah, Shea Gildas Alexander, similarly. Devin Booker and Trey Young. I was all about them at that end of the first round area last year. But then you do that. And then it comes to it and people get, go crazy. Luka Doncic, you know, I'll say pick him at the end of the, in the mid to end of the first round last year. And now people are like, well, no, nah, you've got to pick Luca at one. You've got to take Booker at nine. Bam's got to be around 10. Um, Covington, yeah, love him at pick 30. And I say, no, nah, that's crazy. And then it makes me seem like I don't like the player because people go overboard on, on top of those guys. I think we've just got to have, and when I say like, yeah, Covington at 44 is terrible. It's not because I don't like Covington. It's because it doesn't fit the system. It doesn't fit the points league. It doesn't fit the, the category or the uh, the scoring team. Same with John Collins. Love John Collins as a fantasy guy. Had him as a top 20 player last year and it worked out pretty well. But again, context is important. It's not like I hate the guy or I, I don't understand his value. It's all about getting the context right. And that's the same as what we've got here with Covington. The Italian cock. Hands off my cock. Danilo Gallinari, yeah, 52. What are we doing? Um, we can't can't rely on that. He was 88th last year, and now he's the backup to John Collins. Yeah, that is a ludicrous ranking. And then McCall Bridges comes in at 76. Love Bridges for category leagues, hate him for points leagues, and you could lose you know, 50 spots of value by drafting him at six, 76. It just does not make any sense at all to grab him in that area. Let's talk ESPN. Now, because they have a new scoring system. This is their new system. Every point is one. Every three-pointer made is an additional one. Horrendous. Every field goal attempted is minus one. Every field goal made is two. Okay. Every free throw attempted is minus one. Every free throw made is one. Rebounds, one. Assists, two. Steals, four. Blocks, four. Turnovers, minus two. Still bad. The problem with this is it really overvalues three-point scoring because every three that you make, you get you too many points for it. All right? So you get three points for making the three. You get an additional bonus point for a three-pointer made. So you get four points. You get two points for a field goal made. So you get six points. And then it's minus one for a field goal attempted. So every three-pointer that your player hits, you get five points for it. You would have thought it would be common sense to... Um, you know, just make three-pointer worth three points, but apparently not. So you get five points for a three. For every you know, two-pointer that you make, you get two points, plus you get two points for the field goal made. So that's four, and then minus one for the attempt. So that's three. So every two that you make, you get three. Um, every shot that you miss, you get one. So I guess if you're a 50% shooter, then every two-pointer made is two points, but it's still just a, a whack system. And again, it's really favoring scorers because assists are two, steals are four, and that's better than Yahoo's three, but it's still not enough. It's still valuing scorers significantly higher than uh, than you're talking about any other category there. So, And the three-pointers, five points for the three-pointer, it just doesn't make any sense at all to me. I think it's way too high for those um, categories. So let's have a look at some sleepers on ESPN. Shea Gildas-Alexander. Comes in at number 37. Now, Shea is going to get the ball in his hands. He's going to be the point guard. He's going to have high usage. He was ranked 52nd last year. I'm expecting a big, big jump up for Shea. The 37 is not bad for him. And this is based on ESPN's ranks because they have ranks that they put out for roto leagues, for head-to-head -head leagues, and for points leagues. So Shea at 37, uh, I think, is, is value. I've already talked about Darren Fox at 46. Great value there for him. He's another guy that jumps up in this format. Yusuf Nurkic at 62. 
That seems crazy to me. Nurkic was ranked 13th last year in ESPN's point scoring system. Yeah, in limited playing time or limited games, just nine games and 33 minutes, but at 62, you're looking at an absolute steal there. Gordon Haywood at 72, we talked about already, but let's talk about the crucifix, Christian Wood, the 107th ranked player. He's the starting center for the Rockets. He's going to get opportunity. The usage will be down from where he was in Detroit. There's no doubt about that, but he's still going to be able to put up some really, really strong numbers. And at 107, we are talking about absolute theft to get him at that level. Kobe White at 110, we talked about already, but how about his namesake, Maximum Derek White? Maximum Derek. Now, Derek White is dealing with a toe injury. He had some surgery on that, and he's going to miss the start of camp and maybe the first bit of the season. So that means he's definitely going to be available at the end of drafts, and I'll take him every day of the week. He will play 30 minutes a night, and he will absolutely obliterate that number. I'm not that worried about this toe problem. It doesn't sound serious. He's a top 70-ish guy in the making. The tank, Tom Bryant. Um, Bryant is going to be the starting center for the Wizards. He doesn't need big minutes at all. He was 81st last year in just 25 minutes a night. So at 112, you're already well ahead of where you need to be. Play him 30 minutes, and he's probably a top 40 player. This is absolute theft again. Kobe White, Derek White, Thomas Bryant, all outside the top 110. And then the next two blokes, Jeremy Grant at 146. Come on, we've talked about him already. And how about my man, Wendell Carter Jr.? I've been hyping this guy up for years. He is an Al Horford analog. He can shoot. He can pass. He's an unbelievably good defender. Unfortunately, he had Fred Hoiberg, and then he had literally the worst coach in NBA history, Jim Boylan. When Boylan got there, Boylan said, don't shoot threes. Don't try to score. Don't pass. We're never giving you the ball. And Carter just was like, what's this shit? Like, I can do all of this stuff. And he completely went into his shell. And then, thankfully, yesterday, Billy Donovan came out and said, well, Wendell actually is a good passer, and we're going to get the ball in his hands, and we're going to run things through him. That is what you absolutely should be getting excited about. You should be ready to lift the table up without using any hands. That's how excited you should be about Wendell Carter's season. He was, last year, the 111th ranked player, so that ADP of 137 still doesn't make any sense. He is very good. If it doesn't work out for him this season, then maybe I'll give it up. I think he's still got top 25 upside at some point in the next two to three years. I am massively in on him at this area of the draft. Darius Basley, ESPN, and this goes for Yahoo as well because he's way down on Yahoo. Um, he's ranked 785th. Yeah, uh, he's a top 100 guy probably for this season. He's going to start. He's going to get shots. He's going to block some shots. He's going to score. He's going to do lots of things. But at 785, I guarantee you, there aren't, uh, there aren't 700 or 650 people that are better than him. Guarantee you that. Scroll down the bottom of your list, stick him in your queue, and grab him with one of your last picks. Mason Plumley at 195. He should be the starting center for the Pistons. He's not that good in category leagues because he's a low scorer and he's... Um, uh, his free throw percentage is really poor, but it doesn't really matter here. He could be a top 100 guy this year. I love him with a late pick. Uh, the Jedi, OG, actually not the Jedi. He's just OG Ananobi now. But what about Scarf? OG. Stop OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Yeah, OG Ananobi at 161. Now his value is nowhere near as high as what it is in category leagues, but that's still yeah a long way off where it needs to be. OG can be maybe a top 100 guy. He was 113th last year, so I don't know what we're doing at 161 with him. The next guy is uh, is the wiki, Chris Boucher at 167. Boucher is going to get minutes at backup center, at power forward. There is some downside risk with him, but he's such a big permanent producer that at 167, you're going to get some value there. And I've also got Yaka Pertl listed at 230. Now, Popovich did come out and say they want to run smaller. They Hopefully, this means the end of Trey Lyles, to be honest, and we get more DeRozan at the four, more Keldon Johnson at the four. Pirtle is probably going to be the backup to LaMarcus Aldridge. But even if he plays 20 minutes a night, he's better than the 230th ranked player. And with Aldridge being talked about as being stretching the floor more and taking more threes, maybe Pirtle and Aldridge can actually play together now, which would help Pirtle's case. I think Pirtle's breakout is still coming next season when Aldridge is gone and he is the full-time starting center. But for now, he's still undervalued at number 230. ESPN bus, pa Pascal Siakam at 14. Come on, guys, you, you did this last year and it didn't work out. He was the 33rd ranked player. You're not taking him at 14. That is an absolute waste. Uh, Brandon Ingram at 25. Uh, you know that I have my concerns about Ingram. He was 35th last year. So at 25, you're expecting improvement from last season. And this is with a full season of Zion. And it's assuming that his shooting doesn't regress, which it did in the bubble. Uh, there's no way that I'm taking Ingram at number 25. 
Drew Holiday, we talked about already. Victor Oladipo at 59. I just think that Oladipo is never getting back to his best. He was 163rd last year. That's not really fair on him because he'll be better than that this year. But I also am not burning pick 59 on him. And then Robert Covington at 57. We talked about that already. He is a category league player and not a points league guy. Um, on to the last list of busts. Devontae Graham at 63. Guards are going to miss out in Charlotte because Lamelo Ball is there. Graham last year was 50th in points leagues based on this ESPN setting. So I can understand that ADP. I just think he's going to lose a lot of usage to Ball and to Haywood and assist opportunities. So that's why I've got him down there. Bogdan Bogdanovic, who was 95th last season, has got a uh, ranking of 71 on ESPN. That's expecting some pretty big improvements. And maybe he does play 35 minutes a night in Atlanta. I doubt it. I just think that's a bit of a waste there. Rubio at 64, the ravishing one. I just don't see how he gets the minutes. Last year, he played 31 a night, and he was a top 50 player. He was great. Will they play him over D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Anthony Edwards? Probably not. And that's going to mean that at 64, he's a bust. Dennis Schroeder at 67. I know Schroeder's come out and said, oh, I've done the thing coming off the bench before, and my agent talked to the Lakers, and I'm going to be a starter. That's all well and good. But if you are a starter, then your usage is being ceded to LeBron and to Anthony Davis. And if he's a starter, that means one of Wes Matthews or Contavious Caldwell Pope comes off the bench. Maybe he starts, maybe he doesn't. Is nowhere near the same situation for Schroeder that it was for him last season. So at 67, it is a waste. He was also 85th last year. So expecting him to be significantly better than he was last year. I think that's a little bit foolish. And then Lou Williams coming in at number 65. Lou was 91st last year. I think there's a chance Lou is traded by this Clippers team. And I just don't think he's even got a shot of really replicating what he did last year. So at 65, he looks like a bust to me. Guys, that'll do it for today's show. I hope you guys who do play points leagues like this. And can I implore you guys, please play a category league. Yes, you are, my mates don't want to do it. That's all fine. Just go and join another one. Go and check out the link below. Go and join the FBI leagues with Matt and Brendan. Go and try it out. It is multitudes, magnitudes, more fun. It's more challenging. It's more fun. Please go and try it. I will... And normally when I do the shows during the year, I'm just talking about what a player does, right? So any ranking that I reference will always be category leagues because that is what is the vast majority of people playing. I will do some points league specific shows, but real realistically, I don't really know what a points league specific show gives you during the season. The information that I give in, in shows can be taken across to nearly all formats, but just remember to be able to translate what it means. If a guy's a volume scorer, he gets a boost. If he's a low scorer and he thrives in getting steals and blocks, then his value really dips down in points leagues. That is the main conversion factor. Or you can just look on Basketball Monster and see where these players rank depending on your individual scoring setting. Guys, subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.